here is something that is really quite fascinating in photography and life. Is ever since you're young, you're kind of programmed with fear as a way of not dying. Right? So all of us in terms of our human DNA and our human biology, there's something called risk aversion or fear aversion. I'm sure you know Mark, right? Yes. Right? So as human beings, we've evolved that the pain we feel from taking a risk or having fear is two times more painful than a possible gain. So let me explain this a better way. If you go to a casino, right? Losing $100 is two times as painful as winning $100. Does anyone here ever go to a casino and know that feeling? It's like, oh, you know, I lost 100 bucks. I could have bought like 10 sandwiches with that or something like that, right? So in our DNA, we are hardwired to have fear. And fear is what's kept human beings alive for, you know, thousands of years. So it's, it's kind of a good thing. So if we didn't have fear, we wouldn't have been able to exist this long. So even like, you know, you see a dark bush in the corner, you're like, okay, there might be some yummy berries in there, but then there might be a lion in there that might be eaten. Because we feel fear, the chance, the small chance of there being berries versus the small chance of there being a lion, it's better to avoid the lion than have a small chance of getting berries, right? So, in today's world, the chance of us dying or getting eaten by a lion is quite small, right? But the fear still stays with us. And the fear is something that's very real, and we all feel it, right? But if you want to be a great visual artist or a photographer or a street photographer, you don't want to be the slave of fear. You want fear to be your slave. So let me give you guys a practical example of photography. I don't think the purpose is to eliminate fear 100% or else you just be like a whole kid, like, I am Spock, I have no human emotions, I have no fear. But rather, and this is actually a quote that I get from um, uh, Jimmy uh, Iveen, you know the guy who made the Beats by Dre or is a musician? He says, use fear as a stimulus to push you forward, right? So, in life, I think, you don't know how to make a good life or how to be successful, but you know what you're afraid of. If you do what you're afraid of, that's actually a good stimulus for you to become getting higher to the next level. So, even like, let's say you want to ask somebody on a date, right? And you're afraid to ask them on a date or whatever. That's a good sign is that it means that that's actually something you really want to do. And so, in photography, the rule is, first of all, if I see something that scares me, I must photograph it. Because, once again, you can walk around all day and not know what a good photograph is going to be, but you know what's, what scares you. And so, this is what I see. If I see a scene or a person, I just like, the heartbreaker. You feel the, the cold sweats going down your back. We all, we all know this feeling, right? So once you feel that, that feeling, Consider that like a red light ball saying, hey, Steph, Eric, photo alert, this might be a good photo, don't miss out on it. So this thing which is fear we have, right, this fear thing which is in our heads, don't be like, oh, I'm afraid of it, therefore I should not shoot it. Be like, oh, I'm afraid of it, therefore I should shoot it. So it's thinking that, once again, let fear be your guide. So, uh, another way you can ma imagine it, right? So imagine fear looking like the, the Grim Reaper, right? Like, guy with a big hood, looking quite scary. Oh, no. So imagine Eric Kim as the Grim Reaper. Big coat, right? Right? And I got the stick, right? So imagine me personified as fear. Fear should be your guide. So like, imagine when we're actually on the streets, right? 
I'd be like, oh, Jan, you see this scene? You should photograph this. And Jan's like, no, I don't, I don't want to photograph that. That's kind of scary. He's like, no, 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 no. You should probably photograph that. So when you think of fear, when you're out shooting on the streets, think of fear as your imaginary friend <coughs> who tells you what to photograph. Consider to yourself, let's say if you spent, let's say if you spent the rest of your life taking photos of everything you're afraid of, just think to yourself like, how much more brave and confident and how much more fully realized would I become and how many more great pictures would I take? So raise your hand if you've ever seen a good photo opportunity but didn't photograph it because you're afraid. How does that make you feel? Frustration. Frustration, what else? Well, angry at yourself. Basically. Angry at yourself. Like, can you elaborate on that? What do you mean by that? Like, yeah, so shit, what did you take is, and uh, I should have taken it. Why didn't I? Um, and it's trying to, uh, to express myself. Yeah, so it's feeling frustration at yourself. Like, shit, like, um, like, like for, my, for myself, I'm like, oh, Eric, you know, you're so weak, you're so stupid, like, why do you hesitate so much? You should have shot it, like, it was just an old couple anyways, they really wouldn't have gotten the worst. Does that ever happen to you? It's like, you see a picture, oh, I, you don't shoot it, you go home, you're lying in bed, going to sleep, you're like, oh, I should have taken that picture, <laughs> I don't ever get that fear. What other, what other frustrations do you guys feel from, from photography, from not taking pictures? I just feel a little pathetic. It's like, yeah, I, I've done that before, but now I'm not in a brave mood, so why? <laughs> it's yeah. just stupid. Yeah, so you just feel like a little pathetic and you can't talk down on yourself, right? So, practical strategies to overcome your fear of photographic trainings. So, the first tip I'll give you guys is be transparent and be open that you are actually afraid. Don't hide the fact that you're afraid. So, what I mean by that is this, okay? Uh, before I started public speaking, I was scared shit of this. I was so afraid of talking in front of a group of strangers, right? The best technique I learned is before you do a speech, I'll say, hey guys, my name's Eric. I'm really, really nervous to do the speech. Like, I'm looking at like 300 of you guys. Please, just in case I stutter or if I mumble or I say something stupid, can you guys please understand? have compassion, then everyone's like, oh yeah, you know, I, I totally know how you feel, like, I feel stage fright too, like, if I was in front of, like, 300 people, I'd feel nervous too. So when you're out shooting pictures, right, so let's say, you know, you see somebody and then they look fantastic, you want to photograph them, and you're like, oh, you know, excuse me, sir, you know, um, I'm out taking pictures for this photography class, and my assignment is to overcome my fears, and you know, you look so nice, I love your beard, I, lo I love your look. I'm really nervous to ask permission. Do you mind if I take a picture of you? Please just, you know, kind of help me out because I'm just trying to overcome my fears. And then people are like, oh yeah, sure buddy, like, you know, I know I look cool, and you know, you want to photograph, well, that's, that's totally cool. So by acknowledging to your subject that you do feel a little bit afraid, people actually, first of all, they respect you a little bit more, and secondly, they're more willing to say yes and be okay with it. Um, so that's the first tip to overcoming your fear is admitting that you're afraid. Actually, I think there's more courage and confidence and bravery in admitting that you're afraid than pretending like you're not afraid. So that's the first tip, okay? <clears throat> Second tip to overcoming your fears of um, shooting street photography in this life is... And we're going to do this a little bit later too, is uh, the 10 no challenge. Have you guys ever heard of the 10-0 challenge? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Steph, what's the 10-0 challenge? Oh. <clears throat> you have to go out and uh, get 10 uh, yeah, acknowledgments for people to have their picture, to, to make a portrait, uh, and 10 rejections, basically. Yeah. So why is this a good assignment, Mark? Because it gets you to take risks and not just photograph safe people. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, the 10-0 challenge, the concept is, okay, so first of all, why, why do the 10-0 challenge? The purpose is for you to not become afraid of being rejected, but actually 
be excited to get rejected. Because think about it, like, what if you lived a life where it's not like you're afraid of rejection, but rather you're excited to get rejected. Every single time you get rejected, that actually makes you happier and more excited. Wouldn't that be such a weird life, right? Like, it'd be quite interesting, right? So the purpose of this assignment is when you're out shooting street photos, you look for the 10 scariest, you look, you look for really scary looking mofos, right? You look for the guy with the face tattoo, or the guy like, you know, who you really think will say no. But, you only approach scary looking people, and you try to get rejected. And you can even experiment by saying, by trying to intentionally look creepy to get rejected. So, oh, can I take your picture? And then, you would think that most people like, this guy looks fucking creepy, like, I'm, I'm not gonna say yes. I did a workshop, my last workshop, also another guy named Jan. He went up to a, a you know, a pretty young girl. He's like kind of like he's like a Norwegian dude. I think he's in like his forties or fifties. He goes up to this like pretty young girl and he just went, Can I take your picture? And she's like, Why? And he's like, it's just for myself. And then I was watching this, I was like, oh it's so painful. Like And then she was like, okay. And I was like what what? Like, so so <laughs> The reason I love teaching this workshop is because I'll give you guys a sense of, hey, photograph that guy. And I'm thinking, it's like, oh, that guy will definitely say no. But then they say yes, and even I'm still shocked. So going out and trying to get a rejected, trying to get 10 no's. So the fun thing about this assignment is in the past, I've done five yes, five no challenge, which is you need you approach a bunch of strangers, get five people say yes, five no. Now I'm just like, okay, let's get rid of the guesses. Just go straight for the no's. So when we go out shooting today, you need to approach only people you think will say no and try to get 10 people say no, 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 and try to get the no's as quickly as possible. And then that's probably the fastest way to become fearless because some of us fear the rejection more than the actual rejection. So like what I mean by that is this. You see somebody you want to photograph, it's like, oh, okay, that person will probably say no, and then they'll probably yell at me and threaten to call the cops and punch me in the face or whatever. And then you actually do ask, and they say, oh, you know, sorry, I don't, I don't feel that good today, I don't look that nice today, sorry, I'm not interested. And you're like, huh, oh. you know, they said no, but their no wasn't actually that bad or that scary. It's, they're actually pretty nice about it. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's, I actually feel a little bit better myself. Uh, I'll, you guys want to hear a personal story? So, when we were in college, me and Cindy, we, we both went to UCLA, and Cindy was like, she had five or six other guys interested in her, and she was essentially like the goddess Athena. Like, everyone was trembling at her feet, and even me, right, like, I pretend to be so cool and macho, but deep, deep inside, I'm like, really nervous, right? So like, I wanted to ask out Cindy on a date. I'm like, okay, how am I going to do this, you know, like, Oh, like, if I ask her this and this way, but what if she says no, then if she rejects me, so like, uh, this is this is my, my imagination. I'm like, oh, excuse, oh, Cindy, you know, you want to hang out? You want to grab some sushi or something? And then this is, this is like what I had in my head. Oh, Cindy is like, me have sushi with you? And then she calls all of her, all of her hot friends. She's like, hey, guys, come over here. Eric, this loser, Eric, what's that? And then like all ten of her hot friends all pointing at me and laughing at me like ha 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 and then, and then I go down the spiral and then I wake up from my dream, okay? So that's my worst case scenario, right? But in reality, then I finally go up with courage I'm like, hey, you know, Cindy, you want to have some sushi? She's like, oh, you know, oh, sorry, like I'm, I'm busy, I have to study for finals or something. And I'm like, oh, and then that sucks. But her actual rejection was not nearly as bad as what I imagined it before, too. So, <laughs> overcoming your fear of rejection and actually trying to get rejected, that's, that's the second point. And the third last point I want you guys to uh, overcome is, raise your hand if you do not like to have your own photo taken. Okay, so let me ask you. Sorry, what did you say? Um, do you raise your hand if you don't like other people photographing you yourself? Okay. Uh, why not, Hanukkah? Because I have. 
I have this thing with my face, I was paralyzed for one half. Well, if you take a picture, there's a picture that you can see where the face is different. I think you have a lovely face. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what, what else does it like to be photographed? Uh, what, why not? Uh, because I don't want to be in the middle of the attention. So please leave me on the background and I'm comfortable there and not in the middle. Um, I'd say most people probably feel this, like you don't look the same in a photo, it's like hearing your voice recorded or something like that. Oh, and no one ever hears their own voice recording? <laughs> Every time I watch my own YouTube videos, I'm like, Sydney, turn it off, turn it off! I hate the sound of my voice. Because in my mind, I sound and look much cooler than I think I do. Right? Psychologically, we assume that the rest of everybody else thinks the way we do, right? Of course, right? Like, because I'm the smartest person in the room, and of course everyone else thinks the way I do, right? So consider the fact, okay? If you think that, okay, so, if I don't like having my own photo taken, right? I know why I don't like to have my photo taken, because, oh, I don't really like uh, the look of my face, or, you know, this and that. And then I'll assume that everyone else in the world doesn't like to have their own photo taken. Because you can only use your own experiences in your own mind and apply that to other people's minds, right? So that's the first uh, thing. However, raise your hand if you like to have your photo taken. Oh yeah, the, the, two, the two fellow Bane people. Okay? So I actually like to have my photo taken. Like, I, I actually really like it. <laughs> <laughs> well. right? So, ever since um, I was young, like, I was kind of the guy, like, I always loved being photographed. <laughs> and, you know, the funny thing, though, is that I love being photographed. I don't like all the pictures of me, but I'm like, oh, this, you know, it's still kind of fun. And even most of the pictures that, when I was a kid growing up, all my pictures were people like this. So, like, I didn't, I didn't mind being, looking stupid in photographs, right? So, I love to be photographed and I love the attention of the camera. So, consider the fact that there are probably other human beings in the world, like Eric Kim, who actually love the attention. Have you guys ever seen people walking on the streets, like, with all these nice clothes and cool glasses, and they're kind of walking around looking so cool? Do they want people to look at them? Yeah? Right? Why? why? I don't know, maybe question of style. They take care of their style, so it's also to show the information. They succeed. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. So a lot of people are like peacocks. So even imagine when I was in high school, I was a peacock. Imagine my hair it was all bleached blonde. Big baggy clothes. I had a I had a green hat, a green Adidas jacket, green Adidas shell two shoes, green belt. So I love to show off, right? Because you want people to look at you. So there's some people in the world like me who love being photographed, right? So if you yourself don't like being photographed, you're going to assume everyone else doesn't like to be photographed, but that's not true. There's actually people in the world who like to be photographed. So I guess I have the benefit that because I like being photographed, I automatically assume everyone else likes to be photographed. Now, that's not true, but human psychology is fascinating is that if I'm able to share my passion or my, my worldview, it becomes infectious. That if I'm like, if I assume someone else likes to be photographed and I'm showing them the body language and the excitement, they're gonna be like, okay, yeah. Like they might usually not like being photographed, but they actually might be kind of get kind of get into it. So one of the best ways to overcome your fear of photographing strangers is being okay photographing yourself. So raise your hand if you ever do selfies. <laughs> right? Raise your hand if you hate selfies of yourself. Okay, so my practical suggestion is what you can do, do a selfie project. <laughs> you can even use your iPad. And what I would suggest is when you're doing a project, and then this could be, you know, obviously after the workshop, is spend a year to make self-portrait yourself every single day. You could use um, you could use your camera and just do selfies of yourself in the mirror. You could 
uh, use your phone, you could just do the selfie mode, or what you could do is you could use the, the camera in front of your phone, and then you could hold it this way, or shoot reflections of you, yourself. Essentially what I want you guys to do is to be comfortable with your own face and the way you look, and also knowing how to control how you look. Because if I do a selfie of myself with my camera, If I did a selfie of myself like this, versus a selfie of myself like this, okay, so this is selfie at a high angle, selfie of Erica at a low angle. <laughs> <laughs> so is that how I really look? Uh, depends on, like, if you're a three-year-old child looking up at me, yeah, that's actually what I look like, <laughs> right? So realize that one of the best ways to overcome your, your body image or how you feel about yourself is to feel okay with essentially how you view yourself look, okay? So those are some practical, theoretical things in terms of overcoming your fears and what they're So let me guys uh, transition and show you guys 